ever watched a professional fighter on television and wondered how they would hold up in a real life situation with a large amount of opponents? What if those opponents were all police with guns? And what if the fighter was armed only with a knife? Sound intense? Well, believe me, it is. Hey guys, welcome to Bent Planet, where I tell you true stories of humans in abnormal predicaments. Tales that will twist your mind. And this story is no exception. One word though, guys, before we get into this, if you are sensitive to real life violence or loss of life caught on video, this is definitely not a story for you. This is a disturbing look at mental health gone bad. So please, if that's something that may affect your well-being in a negative way, tune out now. But for those of you who remain, get comfortable. Ready to hear a story? Indonesia is a unique country, being made up of over 17,000 islands, probably more on a low tide. It's a melting pot of cultures and belief systems, and there's one small island amongst them all that has become an incredibly popular destination for people of every walk of life. Bali. There's a sense of calm and creative energy in Bali that convinces a huge amount of people to move there and rediscover themselves and find inner peace, inspiring books and films like Eat, Pray, Love. But there's always a flip side to love, tofu and yoga mats. Not everyone ends up finding their path to self-improvement, no matter how self-righteous they may be. Amokrain Sabet was born in Algeria in 1972, but his family moved to France shortly after, where due to being poor, he was raised in a ghetto. This is a housing project area, generally poverty stricken, thanks to its location and at times ethnic segregation. Ghettos are renowned for being tough places to grow up, with gangland brutality and violence a daily routine. Despite this, Amokrain himself praised his parents for giving him all that he needed in this environment. He would say, Because what counts when you grow up? It's not how wealthy you are, it's how lucky you are to have good parents. It's not how wealthy you are, it's how lucky you are to have good parents. He always said that their love, respect and belief is what forged his strength as a human. And he took their belief in God very seriously. After some attempts to break into the modelling industry in his late teenage years, he decided to move to England at the age of 19. And against the odds, with no ability to speak English and almost no money to survive, he trained in martial arts and soon found himself fighting in pro MMA, professional mixed martial arts, under the name Kian. He also dabbled in the world of acting and ended up playing a role in an independent B-grade film called K, but it never made it to the screen. Success did finally come for him though, building his own security company and a nightclub in London called Fandom. His relationship with his father was a huge source of morale and strength for him. So when he passed away in 2007, Emma Crane was devastated and began to seek a closer relationship with God. His big life change though came in 2014 when he decided to base his life in Bali. He took a one-way flight, rented a villa and started living a fairly normal life for an expat. Hanging out on the beach, hitting the gym every day, generally enjoying life on a tropical island. It's hard to say exactly what caused Emma Crane to lean into his heated side while he was living in Bali, but he definitely wasn't signing up to any sound healing classes. Along with its spiritually focused and alternative healing industry, Bali has a wild clubbing scene. I've spent a lot of time in Bali myself. I was the editor for an entertainment magazine there for some time. And as a musician, I've performed in bars and clubs there for over 10 years, which put me right in the thick of the nightlife. And despite being a lot of fun and feeling like a world without worries, the clubbing world can produce some rather intense dark corners. I remember seeing Emma Crane a number of times out in bars and clubs. He definitely had a look that caught your attention. I mean, the guy was huge. Built like a brick shit house, stacked with muscle, and covered in tattoos that weren't shy. All over his chest, arms, and face. He did give off an unpredictable energy that made you want to keep your distance. Not just because of his size though. I mean, there are plenty of huge Balinese bodybuilders on the island, and they do nothing but smile and make you feel welcome. But when Emma Crane looked at you, it really was a look that could kill. This is from a stranger's perspective though, I didn't know the guy personally. I remember once when I was sitting down in a cafe by the beach and a car slowed down and crawled past, techno music 
blasting. The window was down and there was Emma Crane. He was scoping the cafe as if he was looking for someone and he locked eyes with me, holding my gaze with a death stare as though I was his worst enemy. When someone does that to you, you instinctively react defensively like, what's the problem? But considering this guy looked like The Rock's evil twin, I just pulled my eyes away like a scared little boy. I found out later that he was doing this a lot, getting a reputation for stirring up trouble, picking fights with people, eating at restaurants and not paying, making death threats, and carrying a huge knife, which was putting a lot of people on edge. He also began asking strangers bizarre requests, like, can I borrow your wife? At this point too, he was uploading videos or vlogs where he would ramble on about things that were barely discernible, driven by religious and spiritual themes. He would often be talking as though he had some kind of messiah complex, that the elites of the world were well aware of his existence and that he was playing a great role in being here on earth. There was a lot of talk too about destroying his enemies. You're either by my side, on my side or dead. It's in a peaceful way try to demonstrate that I am the father, the son and the Holy Spirit. On my side, on my side. Oh, dead. Come on, man. Fuck you, kid. Only those who pass the test will enter the next stage of the game, the kingdom of God. The rest of the burn in hell. The, the only thing I'm trying to explain to the world is uh, I first came back and make sure that everybody know I'm back. So you tell me, the Queen of England know I'm back, James Cameron know I'm back, Erdogan know I'm back, all the Saudi kings know I'm back, uh, Qatar, um, Putin, athletes, uh, footballers, uh, models, many of the top goddess in this planet have by turn take a big luck at me and flirt with me. Um, the reason they do that, many of them are to come out of their dreams also, the reason they do that because their spirit knows that I am and uh, they, they are secretly in love with me. You by my side, on my side, or dead, game over. Unfortunately, this is a really serious and sad sign of being mentally unwell. But as you can imagine, it's not easy convincing someone with Emma Crane's physique, anger issues, and fighting skills that they need to get a mental checkup. The police kept receiving complaints about him, including reports of physical abuse, and he was repeatedly asked to go into the station to resolve them, but he would never show up. Immigration then raised awareness with the police that he had overstayed his visa and was therefore living in Bali illegally. So at this point, the police decided to apprehend him. And on May 2nd, 2016, about 40 of them, including some immigration officials, rocked up to Emma Crane's villa to do just that. While trying to convince Emma Crane to leave his property, it was clear that he was not going to be taken anywhere without a fight. He walked out of his villa holding a huge knife, raising it in the air, waving it around, antagonizing the police, and threatening to use the knife against them, while at the same time taunting them to just shoot him. You can see in the footage that one of the police makes a decision to fire some warning shots in the air, but this just aggravates him, and he decides to make a move against the barrage of cops. They immediately start firing at him, and at first he balks, putting his back against the hail of bullets, but then he flips into attack mode, turns and runs full force. Whoever is filming on the camera obviously gets a shock and tries to get out of the way, so we lose sight of what's going on for a moment. There's a lot of yelling as one of the cops is apparently being pushed to the ground, and once the camera pulls up and we again see Emma Crane, he's on the other side of the road. He's pushed through the police and is in a kneeling position against a wall on the grass. As police bullets continue to fire repeatedly into his body, he's convulsing with each shot, but he's not slowing down. Eventually, he attempts to move back towards the police and makes it as far as the road before finally giving in to the bullet wounds. At this point, he makes one last effort to pull his head up and get up. And this is when we hear a final bullet blast. After this, we can hear a cop saying that he's already dead. Now I'm about to play you the raw footage. The interesting thing about this footage is that it initially stirred up a lot of mixed reactions. Some people saying the police acted as expected, taking down a man that was attempting to harm them. Others said it was a vulgar display of injustice, that he was shot repeatedly well beyond necessary and his death was uncalled for. I'd be interested to know what your initial reaction is. And again, please, if you find real footage of violence and loss of life too disturbing, do not watch this. Tune out now. 
langsung Siapa Oke. Langsung mundur. Okay, so at this point, I'll tell you that the first time I saw this footage, I was in the group that thought this was excessive force, an over-the-top reaction that could have been handled without actually killing Emma Crane. But there was something I didn't notice the first time around, and maybe you didn't either. When Emma Crane is on his knees, recoiling from the spray of bullets being inflicted on him, he is not alone there is another human underneath him. He's pinning down a policeman with his legs and viciously stabbing him with every last bit of energy he has. The bullets that keep firing at him are literally an attempt to save that policeman's life. And in a horrible twist of fate, that poor policeman did not survive the attack. When the media reported on the whole incident, it was publicized immediately that an MMA fighter had died from a hail of police bullets after he stabbed one of them to death. But still, there was a lot of discussion about the fairness of those final bullets that took Emma Crane's life. But another interesting twist was announced by the police after this. Firstly, they stated that it was actually rubber bullets used in the showdown with Emma Crane, showing their need for an excessive amount of shots to slow him down. And that only towards the end, after he continued to resist and kept getting up, did they switch to real ammunition. Also, after rushing ahead with an autopsy without a representative of the French consulate present, Emma Crane being a French citizen, the police announced that the actual cause of death was not from any bullet wound, but from Emma Crane's own knife. They claimed that in the struggle, the police officer must have pushed the knife back into Emma Crane's neck, and it was due to a puncture wound, causing blood to be pulled back into Emma Crane's lungs while he was gasping for air, that he lost his life. So in effect, the police state that Emma Crane's death was caused prior to them using real bullets. So, there's no point in me pretending I know more about the facts than the doctor who did the autopsy or the police involved in the shooting. All we can do is look at the footage and get our own impression of what went down. Thanks for tuning in guys, that's a wrap on today's story. Obviously this one has a lot of conjecture around it, so the comment section is open for discussion. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Emma Crane's final moments. Please give the like button some love and subscribe if you'd like me to keep telling you stories. Take care out there, and until next time, that's it from Ben Planet.